Hello and welcome back everybody. We find ourselves here in the Exiles Path, back in Dark Souls 2 after quite some time spent both in other games and away from recording because I was medically unwell, but we've got all that taken care of and I'm back to recording for all of you. It's going to come out a single episode uh, after when the actual hiatus happened just because of uh, how I record. I like to have a single episode buffer so that I can include the clip of the next episode in the end card of the prior episode just to let you guys know a little bit of how I record and why exactly there's going to be a little bit of a jump right here. But I've got some great things planned for the future and I'm going to be continuing the Sang Fua Let's Play as soon as I can. But there's a little something to figure out. There was a technical hiccup, but I think that we can make it work out. As you can see, I'm still forgetting to use my shield, but you know what? Let's pull that out and turtle up. There we go. I know that I can... There we go. One last one. I knew that I could survive his hit if I made sure to take it on my shield rather than trying to roll through it and possibly borking that, but let's see. Did he actually manage to knock this? Yes, he did. Fantastic. I can pick up this here item, but... No matter the case, I will be back and ready for more. As you can see, I took the time to grab another copy of Heal from Melentia, as opposed to Lycia this time. I also upgraded my attunement to handle it, and I gave each of my items a bonus level. Namely, the uh, Catalyst? I forget what they're called. It's been a while since i played Dark Souls 2. I've been a little bit preoccupied with other games, but the, the Chime, yes, that's right as well as my Spear and Benhart's Parma have all received a little bit of a boost, so they should do really well for me going into this next stretch of the game. And hopefully I will do pretty okay because I'm completely skipping, uh, what's it called? The Ruin Sentinels, because that is not an encounter I wanna face like this. You can see I still have my chops, I'm still able to get those really nice unlocked hits. And I can use this antiquated key to come right on in here. Oh! There we go. I was having a little bit of a trouble with that dog, but took him down. And there's one last one over here. Oh! There we go. It can be a bit wonky with the camera, as is pretty much going to be the case for the entire time of me trying out this form of Let's Play, but... Oh! There we go. So misjudging your range with these guys can be absolutely fatal since uh, any misplay or sort of mistake that you make is going to immediately get you caught up for quite a hefty amount of damage. Let's see if I can get the backstab. No, I cannot, but I do get the kill shot. Looks like he had a drop, so I can pick that up when I go down below. Ooh. Well, so much for that idea. Behind that crack there is the Archdrake shield, but I managed... Oh, dear. I managed... Oh, come on. I was locked on. How could I miss? But I managed to break those explosive barrels before I had that opportunity, so I miss out on that. But let's use heal to actually restore some of my health rather than the Estus Flask shards because... No, not the shards, but just the regular Estus Flasks because I'm going to be needing those for quick healing in the midst of combat a little bit later. Did I see a drop? I, there, Yeah, there is. It's just behind this barrel. Let's see what it is. Royal Swordsman Helm. It's a interesting looking helm and it is historically accurate, but I don't think it's worth the wait right now. I'm kind of going pretty light at the moment and I think that's going to work out pretty well for me because it keeps my stamina regen up and it makes sure that I have nice roll distances, which is pretty important considering I need every single advantage I can given the perspective, but we clear out those two royal swordsmen and have this whole chamber to loot. It's got the twin blade, which is pretty worthless now that they give you an upgraded one in the DLCs. A plus seven one, I believe, somewhere along the line. The parrying dagger and of course the bone st oh, I'm behind the chest. Fantastic the bone staff right here, which is actually a pretty nice early catalyst for dark, but if you're going to be using it, then just know that you're going to have to switch out to the sunset staff come late game. There's just no better choice for a dark staff, unless maybe you want to use the uh, black witch's staff. Yes, the black witch's staff in order to cast 
a variety of other spells as well, like I'm going to be doing, so it's just something to keep in mind. Pop open this last chest, grab the loot within, and head on up to the upper reaches of Sinner's Rise. No, it's not quite Sinner's Rise just yet. That's funny. The camera is actually situated right in front of the bars, so you can't actually tell that you're imprisoned. I would not have expected that. That's interesting. Just a little quirky note about the mod that I'm running. Grab that, and we can make it. Yes! That blind leap worked out. I think I'll heal up before that. Oh, no! Oh, come on! Oh, come on! You're kidding me, right? Well, that's pretty sad. Let's let's head on and try that all again, because I'm going to have to start from the very beginning, and uh, goodness, that makes me kind of mad. I was trying to heal up using my heal miracles, but the animation for that causes you to take a step backwards to do the kneel down, and that ended up getting me killed which is very much not my fault. Though, you could argue that I should have kept that in my... Oh, I thought I was out of the range of that. But no matter. I get the rolling attack. Where's the dog? Where's the dog? There we go. Oh, there we go. Took a second to find the right angle there. Heal up again. This time, not killing myself with the heal miracle, because Lord knows that's probably a better strategy. I'm going to have to take on those dogs and the Royal Swordsman again, but... Considering how little trouble they gave me last time, I think I'm... Ooh, I think I'm going to be okay. Ooh, I got a nice little triple shot there. And I didn't even have to swing through any corpses for it. Fantastic. Did I miss it? Did I miss the dog? I did. I can hear it. I can hear it. Where is it? There we go. That's, that's one of the biggest issues I'm having is that I don't know where some of these guys are. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. I should definitely go around and take out the crossbow wielder while I'm upstairs because otherwise I would have to use range to reach him, and I don't have ranged at the moment. So, let's take out both of that. Oh, and this gives me another chance at that Archdrake shield, which I might actually use, considering I'm using a very... Oh, come on. Because I'm using a very spear-oriented playthrough. Come on down. I'm not going to bite. There we go. Took him a moment to realize what was going on, but... Either way, he was going to die, so smack him down. Did he give me a drop? I think he may have. And did he? No. It was the bloodstain that was giving me the toggle option. The way I realized that was because there was a option to toggle, and that only happens when there's another option besides climb up the ladder, but I didn't realize that there had been a bloodstain there, so that's what was giving me the mixed signals. Seems like we're going to have to fall right off the same way again, and this time we are just going to use an Estus Flask because I don't want to deal with this nonsense over again. I can take the hit to my Estus considering there's only uh, about, let's see, five enemies between me and the next bonfire, and that's assuming I fight them all. So, grab my Bloodstain, heal up with an Estus Flask, and then maneuver myself some, there we go, should be perfectly in line, bingo! Now I can fall off down here and use the heal miracle to heal on up. There we go. That is exactly how I wanted it to go the first time, but, you know, you don't get everything you want. And I did not have luck on my side, so that was kind of denied me. Now let's come on up here, open up, and we should have two of those suicide hollows just on the other side of this door waiting for me. Tag them once with my spear and they go down quite nicely. And I could go downstairs to grab the secret path, but I don't think I'm going to need any of the items that can be found down there. Ooh, that's right, there's six enemies. This guy right here. Forgot about him. But he gives me nice eight set of life gems, so I'm not going to complain too much. And now I break out my shield and I can advance in relative comfort, knowing that even if I do mess up these walking dodges, that I'm going to be pretty safe. There we go, enter the mist over here, and we are now in Sinner's Rise, the location of the lost Sinner, who possibly is Igel, possibly is... Oh dear, hello, goodbye. You're really great company. 
but no thanks. Possibly Igel, possibly any number of characters. Uh, I think it's pretty well established that it's female, but some people would actually argue that point, and I am not entirely confident enough in the item descriptions that they give us in-game to debate that. Even though they directly list the Lost Sinner as a female, I don't know, the, the item descriptions have been off about little details like that before, but we tag the bonfire, we have all of our Estus flasks. Actually, we don't. We are missing out on two Estus flasks because I have two shards in my inventory right now, and I'm not sure if I want to continue on like this or go back to Majula. Ooh, the heavy attacks can take them out in one shot. That is very nice knowledge to have. There we go. Heavy attack all of them to death. Fantastic. Really nice. Really, really nice. I managed to take out all of them, and there's nothing stopping me from going on down here and heading right on to the Lost Sinner. So we may be taking out the first of the four great old ones in this episode. Wouldn't that be some nice progress for you all? Because I know that it's been a little bit more grueling than it otherwise would have been, considering the strictures of the playthrough and how new I am to this mode of play. Oh, there we go. Can I get the backstab? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Oh, yes. All that damage right in his face. Wait for him to step up. Oh, missed, missed, come on. Oh, I was like, can I get the second hit in beforehand? I was really hoping for it, but I didn't quite manage it. But only took one hit, and I've got several heal miracles, so I can take care of that before I head into the other chambers. I am going to grab the uh, secret item behind this wall here, just because I kind of want it. And I believe that it's the Southern Ritual Band. No, it's the Northern Ritual Band. Stab him with the backstab. Really nice. I'm really happy I'm pulling those off successfully because it can be very difficult. He goes for a spin maneuver, which means I need to get out of town. And that maneuver means I can get right in his grill because he is vulnerable as all heck. And that's kind of the essence of combat in Dark Souls. While it's never explicitly stated as such, it really is just a matter of responding to whichever animations your opponent is using. And the implicit part of that relationship is learning and memorizing all of their animations and what exactly they mean and how to punish them. You could make the argument that it's a very reactive style that the game forces you into, and I would sort of agree, but at the same time I would also argue the point that it gives you a lot of freedom in how you take on combat. You don't have to play reactive. With certain weapon styles and setups you can actually go for a more uh, aggro, interrupting style of combat and take the fight to the enemy. Ignore all the sort of cover and timing that would normally go into combat and go pretty much all out. The only time that they really demand you learn boss pat like enemy patterns and how to bait out an enemy is in boss encounters like this next one where you can't really go for the very heavy weapon interrupt style. You have to really play reactively and let the boss dictate the pace of the combat, and so it's interesting how they set that up. I never quite looked at it in those terms, but it actually makes quite a good deal of sense, and I think we're going to use the aromatic ooze here. I definitely want to pull out my shield for this. Is there any other changes? Yes, the stone ring is not going to do us any favors, but the ring of life protection means that if I mess this up, I can come immediately back here. Anything else? Anything else? Yes, let's get one green blossom because that'll give us just that extra tidbit of stamina that may prove to be the difference so we are all set and we are going in the lost sinner is right through here and i'm ignoring her cutscene oh bugger ah oh, sadness there we go swing and a miss swing and a punish swing and a miss swing and a oh no was not expecting the three hit combo but i Paid the price for that. Estus, while I'm safe, I'm going to try and stay locked on, but 
There's only so much I can... Oh, waited for the three-hit combo this time, like a smart person, using those lock-on to... Oh, still took the hit there, but no matter... Oh, snap. I'm really messing up these timings. Oh, dear. Oh, I was so afraid that I hadn't managed to pull off the roll, but here we go. Two. Wait to make sure that she's not going to do a third hit. Oh, dear. That's one more Estus, and we're on our last Estus now. So we need to be very careful, but as long as we're holding our range and making sure to time our dodges appropriately, making sure we're reading the boss to see whether or not she's going to be following up her attacks, we should be okay. Tag her again. Roll out of those. Tag her once. Roll. Roll. Okay, we're just about done with this boss. Oh, I went for the counter hit and... Paid the price. Oh, yes, yes. There we go. Lost Sinner is down on first go. Oh, that feels great. Because Lost Sinner is one of those bosses that can really mess you up if you're not managing her properly. And the fact that I managed her in my first run with this, this uh, first person mod really makes me excited and a little bit hopeful for the rest of the game because I was really not expecting it to go that perfectly. But wow. Yeah, I took her down no time at all managed everything just nice i didn't even run out of estes so we're gonna head right on back to majula and this is gonna be pretty much it fantastic little run right there really looking forward to the next boss okay here we are back in majula and i think this is right around where i'm gonna cut it i'm just going to upgrade my estes flash shards and apply a few level ups but thank you all so much for watching this is a really engaging series that i have going and i'm really having a lot of fun with it and especially now that we're getting really underway with the actual combat and uh progression i'm i'm really looking forward to where this series is gonna go so once again thank you all so much for watching it was an absolute pleasure and have a great day